All right, hello Brewtubers. I'm here today, I'm gonna to be brewing a Vermont IPA, basically. Um, the recipe, it's one of the uh, brew dog recipes I've spoken about before. Um, the, it's a New England IPA, so this one is gonna be nice and hazy. I'm just gonna turn down the sparge water. So, I've got um, the ingredients here. I've got 3.3 uh, .3 kilos of pale ale malt. I've got 800 grams of Maris Otter. I've got 500 grams of wheat malt and 200 grams of flaked oats, or just I've just used um, quick oats, basically, uh, the, the Black & Decker kind. Um, I find they're actually very good for these sort of um, beers. So I'm coming in a bit later um, through the process. I've just finished the mash. So I'm gonna show you the mash out now. Um, basically this is going to be, I'm going to be cubing this, I'm going to be trying something a little different um, with this beer. I'm going to try and cube it. I know a lot of people don't like cubing New England IPAs, but I think I've got a way that could potentially work with the hops. Um, so what I'm going to do, this, this recipe calls for one gram of Chinook hop um, as the bittering, and it calls for that in the middle. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to put that, do that at about 10 minutes uh, remaining. Uh, it's a 60 minute boil, so generally you take 20 minutes off your uh, hop additions uh, when you're cubing, that's the rule of thumb. Now it's got a big payload of hops to go in at the end. Now I'm going to explain what I'm going to do with that. So what we've got is we have, we're going to have 20 grams of Chinook, 30 grams of Amarillo, 30 grams of Simcoe, um, and that is going to be, that's to typically go in at the end. So if you were crash kill, um, chilling this, you would put those hops in at the end and then flame out, flame out, and then um, go through um, chilling your beer. But I don't have um, that luxury. Uh, we don't really have a lot of water here at the moment. Um, so I'm sort of trying to conserve uh, what, what we got and I just don't want to waste it. And I figure cubing is a good option. So what I'm gonna do to get around that is when I, um, the cube that I'm gonna fill will be about 17 liters. So I'm gonna add another three to four liters uh, when I top it up with water. So I'm going to use 500 grams of light DME. I'm going to make a mini wort and then I'm going to boil that for 15 minutes and then I'm going to drop those hops in at the end. And then, then I'm going to basically chill that in the sink and then drop that in on top of the, uh, the cube to give me my 20 litres or 21 litres as well as allow me to do the proper hop um, additions at the correct times um, to extract the right amount of alpha acids. I think it's going to work. I have done something similar with a um, with an actual IPA that worked quite well when I was cubing. So uh, I think that it's going to really work. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to come over here. I'll show you the the mash as it stands at the moment. I've just flicked it off. It sat at um, I mashed that at 68 degrees for 75 minutes. Um, and I'm using a little robo brew here, which is a fantastic little thing. Um, I can... So I'll come back, I'll flip the camera, I'll come back. All right, so there it is there, that's the robo brew. It's sitting at 68 degrees. Here's my sparse water that's ready to go. Um, I've had it recirculating, so we can get back here. Pull that out and I'll give you a proper look in a second. So that's ready to go now. I'm just going to lift this basket. I'm going to detach the arm, lift the basket out, let it start draining, and then I'm going to start putting the sparge water in on this. This has got quite a amount of oats and wheat malt in it. So last time I did a big, I did a white IPA, it, um, it effectively, um, it basically stuck. I got a bit of a stuck sparge, so I just I just use my um, you know, use my paddle here, and I just stir it like it owes me money, and it it seems to work fine. You know, I don't seem to have any problems like that. I just keep keep stirring, and as I pour water in, I just do a batch sparge, pour the water on, stir it, stir it, stir it, and just keep stirring it until it falls through, and it actually works quite well. Um, I've never had a problem. I've done it a few times. I did it with my last white IPA, as I said. Um, and that worked really well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna basically do the same thing again if I have that problem with this one. But I better get onto it and I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, so here we are. I've just pulled the um, malt pipe out. 
and that water's draining out. I'll just take this arm out. Um, these Robo Brews. I'm gonna be honest. I've, I've had a I had a grandfather, um, and I didn't use it all that often. And it was about fifteen hundred dollars. I had the urn and everything like that, and I just didn't use it enough. So I sold it. Um, pretty much got my money back for it. They're you know high commodity. A lot of people want them. And then I went and bought this. And this was uh, $400, not even that, I think it was about $380 or $360. Um, and I tell you what, I use it all the time. I'm not as cautious with it. I used to be really, really cautious with it. And I, you know, I didn't want to damage it or do anything stupid. So, um, yeah, I basically, um, you know, I give this thing a bit of a thrashing. I use it all the time. I do, I do, um, you know, um, partials in it, I do all grain in it, I do um, complete extracts, I do smash beers in it, do a really nice smash citra, uh, or citra smash, which is fantastic. You know, and it works, it works an absolute treat, I absolutely love it. So, you know, I couldn't, um, you know, at this stage I couldn't fault it, I haven't had too many dramas with it. Um, but, you know, time will tell. But, like I said, $1,500 as opposed to 350 or 370 whatever it was. I think it's a no-brainer. So, just come up here and have a look. All right, so that's now dropped, starting to drop through. That's doing actually really well. I'm going to just dump some sparge water on top of this. I'm not going to take the pipe out, uh, take the um, the top out. I'm going to let that um, act as a filter, and it sort of gives me a bit of a buffer um, to allow the water to evenly distribute and come and, and filter its way through the grain bed. So. Here's water, I've measured it out. It's sitting at 77 degrees. Um, and there, yeah, I'm gonna drop that in and I'll come back when I've done that. There we go, I've just added about two liters of water. So that's draining its way through, making its way through the grain bed. Um, washing out all those amazing um, sugars out of that. Uh, just as when I boil this, I generally will kick it up. I'll use the, because it's got two elements down here, the 500 watt and the 1900 watt. So what I'll do is I'm gonna kick that on now, both of them. So I've just turned both those on. That gives me 2400 watts. I'm gonna ramp it right up and get the boil started now because this is starting to flow really well. I'm, I'm happy with the way the sparge is going. It doesn't look like it's gonna be, it's not um, sticking too much, which is good. Um, and it seems to be flowing through the grain bed nicely. So I'm gonna just continue, start the boil process on this. Um, set the, I usually set the timer here. I'll set that to about 110, so I'll pause that. Uh, set the temperature up to over 100. Obviously you can't get to 100, so that just guarantees, I set it to 110 to do the boil. That just guarantees that it is going to boil. Uh, and then I press start and then you see the lights come on that's ready to go you got your auto and manual so you can set that to do um, you know you can set that for delayed starts and things like that I don't bother with that it's a pretty easy setup um, things change for me too daily so I might have every plan of doing a uh, of doing a, a brew tomorrow but in actual fact um, something comes up and I don't get to do it so I find that just setting it up on the day when I know what my plans are um, works far better for me but the option is there if you want to use it knock yourself out um, it's I know a lot of people who do use it and they love it so you know and they use it on the grandfather has it the same um, same setup so it, it works really really well um, so I'm going to keep sparging here and get that temperature up to boil and once we're at the boil stage, I'll come back and we'll see how it's going. This here is the recipe that I'm using, number 262 from the um, BrewDog catalog. Um, and this, yeah, so this is their New England, um, or the yeah, New England IPA. This is the BrewDog 2017. Um, I've basically made it into a compendium effectively. I've mentioned this on other videos. I just went out, printed it all off and then had it bound. Um, and it works fantastically. Um, so yeah, so basically, I'll zoom in a little bit. You got your um, 
you know, your ABV is 6.9 at the end. I've used a 35. It gives you your original gravity. Um, it gives you a little descriptor of what the beer's like. And then it gives you your volumes here. So, you know, you've you got 20 litres at the end. Boil volume of 25 litres. Um, ABV, uh, all your targets. Um, pH, colours, um, attenuation. Here's your mash temperature, 68 for 75 minutes. Fermentation, 19 degrees using... Vermont AO yeast WLP 4000. I can't find that one, so I'm um, actually going to be using um, Burlington's. I think it's 095, um, which is also really good for New England IPAs. Um, and here's your grain bill. Just zoom in on that, give you guys a bit of a squeeze at that. And here is your hops. So this is what I'm saying, this uh, middle here, because I've got to take it down 20 minutes, if it was a 60 minute boil, that would normally go in at uh, 30 minutes, but I'm gonna do that at 10 minutes, because you, you deduct 20 minutes off your off your mash, um, off your timings. Then I'm gonna add these, these ones here, your Chinook, Amarillo, and Simcoe, which are supposed to go in at the end, but because this is going in the cube, I'm gonna make a mini mash of three liters using 500 grams of light LME, and I'm gonna basically boil that for 15 minutes and then drop these three quantities in then with the dry hopping it says to use 50 grams of citra amarillo mosaic and simcoe each well, i'm actually going to double that i'm going to add 100 grams um, of each so that's a four well yeah that's a 400 gram dry hop this is going to be super juicy citrusy and tropical now the reason i'm going to do that and I'm not just um, taking liberties here, but down here it says um, this little juice box is dry hopped at a rate of 10 grams per litre. Wonder what would happen if you doubled it. So, challenge accepted, I am going to double that. Um, I like my hops, I can really get into them, so I'm gonna double that. Um, but also it gives you food pairings too, the sort of things that it, it goes really well with. So, you know, that's looking fantastic. That's the recipe. As it stands, the Vermont IPA number 262 from the Brewdog DIY. Okay, so the sparging has now finished. I've removed the malt pipe, which is sitting here. And then, um, as you can see, there's the grain bed, which is looking and smelling delightful. Okay, so we're nearly up to temperature here. I've still got the two elements on. When this does hit temperature, I'm going to flick off the 500 watt element and just leave it. So this is it here. I ended up getting about 23 litres, which is pretty much spot on. I find that this actually allows me to, this drops about one and a half litres every 20 minutes um, when boiling at full or um, a litre every under. So um, yeah, basically this should get me down to where I want to be to put into my cube and have that ready to go. Um, so here we are here. Not a lot's going to happen now. I'll come back when it's uh, when it started to boil and when it's hit temperature and I'll flick that off. I just want to add um, one more thing uh, in regards to Werflock. This is a, um, typically you would throw the Werflock tablet in 15 minutes, 10 minutes out before the end, just to allow the beer to, um, to uh, you know, allow the, the, it to coagulate and um, draw out all the, um, the proteins. With the New England IPA, um, they actually recommend not doing that because you want it to be hazy, you want it to be super cloudy, typically. If you don't, if you don't, want your New England IPA in that style to be as like a um, look more like orange juice or you know really cloudy really thick looking um, beer um, aka really any of the, the big American um, breweries Trillium um, and those sort of Trillium are the, probably the, the one that I um, would always think of when I think of a New England IPA um, there's many many others as well um, so basically yeah, you, if you don't want it to look like that and you just want it to be more like Hope, the Hope one here in Australia, Hope New England IPA, um, which is a little, um, it's, it's got clarity, it's still cloudy, but it's not as as um, juice-like as the um, typical Vermont or New England IPAs from America. 
Um, I really like that style. Um, I spent a lot of time in America and I really, really loved them. So that's what I'm going for here. Um, and that's why I'm gonna keep my Werflock out of the mix. Um, but if you don't like that and you want it to be just cloudy but not, you know, not thick cloud um, or murky, then I would, um, I would recommend still using your Werflock. Um, but I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it out. Um, so this here is now starting to get to the point where it's almost boiling. I've just got to keep an eye on it for boil over. These are pretty good. I don't suspect boil over being an issue. Um, I've got my hops here ready. It's only one gram, so it's not really a, a whole lot of hops there, and that's the citra. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. I'll come back when this starts boiling. Okay, so here we are. Boil happening. So I'm going to leave that now. I've got that set. 45 minutes left on that before I have to add. I'm just turned off the 500. 900 will keep the rolling boil going nicely. I'm going to um, add the hops at 10 minutes to go. Kill it and then drain it straight into that using this piping right here. Um, here's the spent grain. I'm just going to go out as I always do and uh, throw that straight onto the garden bed and mulch it in. So there we are. Clean up of all that bits are done. And over here, I have a little kits and bits. It's a uh, beer blanche. I'm going to do a video on that as well. It's a fantastic little drop, um, and it's basically a clone of Le Chouf, the Belgian beer, um, beer blanche uh, called Le Chouf. So I'll come back and I will be, I'm just boiling the water, getting ready to do that one as well. So I've got two on the go. Brew day, love them. Okay, so we're happily brewing here. This She's boiling along. She's dropped considerably, which is fantastic. I'm just gonna drop now, it's 10 minutes to go. I'm gonna drop in the hops. One gram of Chinook, and away she goes. And I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna set this for 10 minutes. And then when that's done, she's done. What I've got decided to do too, I've, um, I've been a bit cheeky and I've kept, uh, I've got it here in a jar. This is um, some dregs and some yeast from um, that I've taken from a uh, handful of uh, hoe garden bottles. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use. There should be just enough to be able to uh, make a starter. So I'm going to fill this with about 500. Uh, mills to maybe a litre of, of some of this wort. I'm going to let it cool down and then I'm going to pitch the uh, hoe garden yeast into that, give it a good um, aerate and then leave it in a cool, dry, dark place. And then every time I think of it, I'll just give it a stir up and see how I go. You know, see if I'm able to cultivate the beer, um, you know, harvest the, the yeast from commercial bottles. I've read a lot about it, seems to be relatively straightforward. Um, but you never know. So I'm going to give it a go and I will um, update this and keep everyone in the loop as to how that's going. Okay. All right. So here we are. We're finished. Uh, we've just hit the 10 minute mark again. So that's 60 minutes. The boil is done. I've turned it off here at the power. We've dropped down to about 19 litres, which is where I want to be sitting. Um, I've attached everything up. I've got the cube ready. Um, this is all ready to go. So now all I need to do is really open this up and let it flow into the cube. Now the beauty of cubing obviously as you know is you save a lot of water because when you 
when you um when you crash chill it down using your um whatever means that you use uh, it just saves a lot of water um there is an art to getting the ibus and the bitterness all right and all that and that sort of thing but once you get your handle on it as i said I, the method that i use seems to be quite effective once you get your handle on it it's actually quite easy to um, navigate um, you don't really need to be overly cautious, like you don't have to go and make sure that you're sanitizing your cube. That's not necessary because what's happening is that boiling water. So I, this is thoroughly clean, but I haven't sanitized it using star sand, but that water, that work coming out of here is boiling, absolutely boiling. So, um, so therefore that now is going to be sanitizing. So when I put the lid on top of that, I'll turn it upside down and then you'll have the sanitized, um, a completely sanitized cube. It's, um, yeah, it's very, very hot as you can imagine. And you can see the steam coming out of it. But um, yeah, so that's a very, very easy, simplistic way of doing a, an all grain um, brewing. It also cuts down so much time on um, fermentation and and cooling it down because that cooling down can take anywhere up to an hour if you if you're not um you know depending on the water that you're using and, and the temperature in here in canberra it's very very hot um so the groundwater and the water temperature here is is very very um is warm so it takes a long time to get it down and you can't always actually get it down to where you need it to be so here we are just make sure that we get the last few drops out of this And here we are. Cubed. Let this pull this out, let it drain back in the last few bits. Just be conscious of trying not to get too much splash and water around. I've got the lid here. I'll put the lid on. Put it on as tight as you can. That's on now, as tight as I can. I'll just get a rag and give it a real good crank. And then, as you can see, she is all good. I'll flip that upside down, let the top part and the lid sanitize. And then we are good to go. I'll sit that out in the garage. And um, yeah, there we have a New England IPA. I'll come back to when I go to, this will probably won't be um, fermented. I uh, probably won't ferment this one for a couple of weeks. Uh, I've got a few beers um, that I'm, I'm in the process of um, brewing out. One is uh, actually this one here, which I'm doing a video on as well. Um, this is a Beer Blanche style beer. Um, which is delicious. So that uses the we've got coriander and lemon, uh, coriander and sorry, orange peel. Um, that beer, that beer there is going to be um, going into the fermenter today, and then that'll allow this one here to cool down and get itself together. And then yeah, probably in another two weeks when this one comes off, I'm going to do another batch of this and drop it straight in on top of the trub and reuse the yeast because WLP 400 is actually quite hard to come by. I've been able to um, snavel a, a vial of it, so I'm going to utilize it and get as many works out of it as I can. Um, so I'm going to make another batch of this, drop it in on top of the trub of this lot and um, get two batches straight um, straight off the bat. And then this one will go in. So it'll be about four weeks before we get to putting this one into the keg, uh, into the fermenter. Um, a lot of people sort of try and let it cool down overnight and then and pitch it the next day. I've let cubes sit for nine months and then i basically i thought oh well I'll, I'll just try it anyway i've used it and it's, it was one of the best beers i've had it was a um an amber and it was fantastic so you know i i don't have any problems in leaving it for a couple of weeks to to, to um to just sit it's it's in a sealed sanitized container you know it can't you can't do any worse than that it's basically um it's as sanitary sanitary as it's ever going to be and it's the same as the um the i'll show you here the work kits it's the same as one of these 
the exact same concept. So this one here is a Citra Hopped Extra Pale Ale. You know, so that that is the exact same concept there. So, and they, they recommend that you can use them up to six months. You can keep them before they have any ill effect. So don't be too concerned. Don't feel that you have to rush it and put it straight into a, into a bottle um, or into a, you know, into a fermenter. You don't have to, you can let it sit. All right, so that beer's done. That was about, took me about two and a half hours to do that. Uh, a bit longer with uh, obviously the 75 minute when you can do a, if you can do 60 minute mashes, brilliant. Um, takes a lot less time. And that sparge was, was quite quick. The longest, well, the part that I hate the most now is the cleanup. So I won't bore you with that. Um, next video, I'll come back. I will, um, will be me putting this into the fermenter and then a taste test. All right, brilliant. Peace.